So what is the media saying about my guy? I would wonder as a kid, right? Well, now, what's the media saying about my team? What's the media saying about my organization? The organization that I plant my flag for. The teams that my dad and my cousins and my uncles love to come over to the hood house to watch. What are they saying about them? That's what I would wonder as a kid because you couldn't wait to be able to go and check out those newspaper clippings or those magazines when I was a kid. It was cool because as a lifelong sports fan, you want to learn so much about your favorite team. So as I mentioned, I was in the hood cave yesterday, the rare time where you could watch the NBA on a weeknight or on a weekday because it was a two o'clock game. So I'm watching Bulls Pistons and the game in Paris, France. And it was a much bigger event than I thought it would be. There was rappers there, actors, basketball, royalty was there. Other dignitaries were there in Paris for this random regular season game, right? There are so many Bulls fans in Paris. They either flew in to be there live in that city, or they're just Bulls fans that's in France. A producer from NBC Sports Chicago that flew over texted me and said that that arena had this United Center feel from the fans, which is completely dope, right? It's great that it was that feeling like it felt like a Bulls home game because there's so many Bulls fans that were in Paris for this game. Bulls jerseys, everywhere to represent. It also was a celebration of the continued strength of the international footprint on today's NBA game. When the Bulls and Michael Jordan, along with B.J. Armstrong, who, who was then a Bulls guard, and now he's an NBA agent, when they were at the game yesterday, they were, ta- they were there because it represented when they played in Paris in 1997. Think about this. About one of every 14 NBA players was born outside the United States during that time, in 1997. But I guess my bigger point to this is, is that Michael Jordan casted such a wide shadow over our city. Michael Jordan casted such a wide shadow over the country and the world. Bigger than Oprah, bigger than Siskel and Ebert, bigger than anything else you could think of in Chicago at the time. Bigger than anything. And actually, Michael Jordan was bigger than any one franchise bigger than most companies. And people to this day marvel at the exploits of players like Walter Payton and the Bears from 1985 because it's about personalities. It's about winning. It's about traditions. They're all components of staying power in the sports landscape in this city. So we can talk about the past, which I just did with Jordan and Payton, but let's talk a little bit about today. Where are we today? 2023. On January 20th, where are we today as far as star power is concerned? Because the thing that makes sports go round and round is star power. It's one thing to say, I root for this team. I love this team. But it's something to be said about one of your favorite teams that has a star on it, where it's like, not only are they a star in Chicago, but they're a star in their sport, that they're a difference maker, a cornerstone in the sport. So what about today? We talk at nauseum about Justin Fields for the Chicago Bears, and rightfully so because he was drafted by the Bears and we saw some signs of life from that position for the first time in a long time. Justin Fields is the guy for the Chicago Bears, and I think that you can easily say that because look at the rest of the roster. Nothing against Eddie Jackson, nothing against um, you know some of the other guys in the secondary for this Bears team, nothing against David Montgomery or Cole Komet, but we all know that Justin Fields is that guy. A lightning rod for conversation and very polarizing. Is he the star in Chicago? When you think of all the stars, is he the guy? What about with the Chicago Bulls, with Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan? Now, those two guys are not homegrown. I mean, Justin Fields, as you all know, homegrown with this uh, Bulls team, uh, with his Bears team. But with Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, not homegrown for the Bulls, but they play for the Bulls. What about Taves and Kane for the Hawks? Remember them? Remember the Blackhawks? They're still around, by the way. They still play hockey. But those two, part of multiple championship teams for the Chicago Blackhawks. Candace Parker is a Hall of Famer, the GOAT, playing for the Chicago Sky. I'm glad that she's in this city where she left Los Angeles, she's with Chicago, she's back home. I'm glad that we have a star in Candace Parker with the Chicago Sky. Now, you look around the landscape for the rest, and it's like Dylan Cease and Tim Anderson and Kyle Hendricks and Dansby Swanson, who just got here. I think that our city's bereft of quality stars. 
And I know a lot of that comes from winning. A lot of that comes from teams having a, a commitment to winning. But here's what I want to talk to you about. And Shay, let's open the phone lines this morning. 312-332-ESPN, 332-3776. That's our telephone number. I want to talk to you a little bit about who represents Chicago sports in 2023. If Justin Fields is the number one guy on your list, then who's second? Is there a distant second there? Or is there someone that comes to mind? You say, well, you know what? When you think of Chicago sports, you think of... Because I think it's it would be sad that in 2023, as we have this conversation on this snowy Friday morning, that the person that represents Chicago is still Michael Jordan. That's a shame. Michael Jordan owns the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, Michael Jordan is not in the public eye in Chicago. I wish he was around more often, but he's got business with the Charlotte Hornets. And even though that he did so much for the city while he played uh, in the post, he was with the Wizards as a front office person, as a player, and he's with Charlotte. He's never around. He's never in the public eye. Um, as much as I love Walter Payton, he's passed away. And I know that he's in the hearts and minds of many that love the Chicago Bears and Walter Payton because Sweetness was a special player. But what about 2023? Like if I say who's the guy who represents Chicago sports in 2023, if Justin Fields comes first, then who's the close second? When you go out of town, and I know many of you travel that listen to the show, or if you're living someplace else, you say, I'm from Chicago. And they're your Chicago sports fan. Do they go, when you have those conversations, do they go back to the 80s and 90s and talk about sports in Chicago? Or do they talk about what's happening in 2023? 